Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Seychelle Van Poole. I'm Via Williams. I'm Sarah Reynolds. And I'm Wendy Papazan. As working moms and dads, we worry a lot about whether or not we're raising our kids right. I'm sure all of our listeners would agree, uh, yes. at least those of those with kids. And uh, personally, as someone who grew up knowing the value of a dollar and the value of hard work, I'm honestly a little worried that my kids are going to grow up spoiled or entitled. And Me too. I recently, yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's a legit fear. And I think it does happen. It's impossible uh, for it not to happen. And I recently read a great article from Nathan Barry, who is the founder of ConvertKit. And um, he's got a lot of great stuff there. You can go to Nathan Barry. It's B-A-R-R-Y dot com to find the article. But it inspired me to write this episode. And uh, honestly, I've borrowed quite liberally from his newsletter, as well as added a few things to it. So... Thank you, uh, Nathan. Today, thank you, yes. Nathan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about eight things that you can do to help your kids build wealth. And Nathan starts off this article by saying the opposite of spoiled isn't poor. I think sometimes mm. we think of like spoiled mm. rich kids. Yeah. The opposite of spoiled is actually grateful. And Ooh, uh, I love this. Uh, I, I love that when I heard it because I've worked really hard on my gratitude habit and I hopefully have shared it with my children. And uh, and so just as a reminder, just because kids are wealthy doesn't mean they're necessarily spoiled. It just means they're ungrateful. Mm. So uh, yeah, Via, why don't you kick us off with, with number one of eight things to help your kids build wealth. Oh, wow. That, that is really powerful. And, and I will do that. And I found myself reflecting, I mean, forever, I think we all do this, but forever I have made my kids and spouse and all of us sit around the business or sorry, sit around the dinner table every, every <laughs> night that we eat dinner Sometimes together. Sometimes it feels like a business table. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has to say their, their gratefuls, but really quite a funny story about it. When, when the kids were really young, I used to do peaks and pits. I'd say, okay, like what, you know, give okay. us a peak and pit of your day, right? That's how we started it. I love that. And it was like, wah, wah, wah. it was like the pits. It was like, and then this was the pits. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> we're going to rewind this. We're going to do gratefuls. And we, we've been doing gratefuls for probably 10 years as a family because oh. the whole peaks and pit thing was spiraling a little bit. Like it wasn't, it wasn't really going where I wanted it to go, you know? So, we, you know, um. I make them say gratefuls and, and I know we all know this really quick, but, um, but when you, ha when you're, when you do it every day, it just, forces you to go in different directions. You can't just, I'm mm -hmm. grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. Mm -hmm. You know, it really makes them to think. And so what we do when we do grateful, it's a little difference on it is we'll say, well, I'll say, because I usually lead that, you know, what are you grateful for today? Or it's your birthday. What are, What is, you know, what are you grateful for this year, this birth year, you know, this, this last trip around the sun? Or, you know, if it's Christmas, what are you grateful for this Christmas? I'll always add like a little, a, a specific sort of time frame or subject so that it makes their brains kind of go in different mm -hmm direction. So I thought I would add that. That was really good. Well, and I think it, that is the, that's the research behind it is you should be grateful for something specific. If you're just kind of uh, mailing in your gratefuls, you know, you want to be yeah. like, I'm so grateful that I got to spend time with my dog this afternoon. It just makes you appreciate the actual little things. So, you know, maybe you're that. right. Maybe I should mm -hmm. reword it and just say, what are you specifically grateful for? That's a really good, uh, that's mm. a good tip, Wendy. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay, so sure. uh, number one of our six tips. I mean, wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's actually what? eight. No, it's eight. I can't. I don't think my brain can can do it's that. It's six plus two. <laughs> okay, six, six plus, plus two. two. <laughs> we always do six things. We're building so. wealth. Things, so. um, so six plus two. Number we have one. Six tip. plus two bonus tips. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how I that's how I view this. <laughs> okay. So number one, add them, add our kids as an authorized user on our oldest credit card. So a lot of you guys don't know this, but you can add someone as an authorized user on a credit card that you own. And since the average age of account matters on your on your credit history, it matters a lot, by the way, uh, you can give your kids a really big leg up by adding them to one of your oldest cards because it shows a lot of credit history, certainly relative to their age, right? It doesn't cost anything, and there's kind of a hundred 
percent upside, especially they may not even know about it. You can just add them and even you can use it periodically, by the way. But um, uh, Wendy was Wendy talked about this on Twitter, I believe, Wendy, and you can feel free to jump in. But a few friends said that their parents did this for them and they literally went into college with an 800 plus credit score with oh. an 18 year credit history. Was that you, Sarah? Mm -hmm. that, that was actually my mom did that for me. That's um, and that's how I was able to buy a house right out, out of college. Here. And mm -hmm. My credit score was where mm -hmm. it was. And it was, she added me to two credit cards that I had 18 plus years of history. Did you know about it? Did, did that. you know that you, that I you didn't, were added? Um, no, I did not know. Yep. She that's actually awesome. did that also for my husband who um, was born in Nigeria. So he doesn't have, didn't have um, cr credit history and couldn't purchase much at all. And she did the, the same thing for him, which I think is so special. So, um, and he was able to make purchases pretty soon after we got married because uh, she was willing, she was, she did that. So it oh, makes I a difference. I love that. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. I love that so much. And there, there, there are a couple of details. Like you never, ever want to miss a payment on this card because that'll, that'll go the opposite direction. Yes. That would harm them, not, not help them. Uh, you know, blemish is going to be passed just like a, yep. Yep. Um, they don't have to know about it. So, you know, the, the, the kind of second um, good tips on this are don't even give it to them. They don't need to know. They shouldn't even know they're added to it. But you might want to use it uh, once or twice to just keep it active, you know, for your purchases if you want. Um, and then um, the third one is most um, major banks will allow authorized users without a minimum age. Sometimes you'll find there's a minimum age of 13, sometimes 15. So I'm, I'm finding myself thinking, well, Zoe's 12. She turns 13 in October. I'll probably just go ahead and wait until later this year, but certainly I'll do that for the boys now. That's a great tip, Wendy. Yeah, Thank you. I'd never even yeah. heard of it, and I literally went online um, to Chase, and I and it took like less than two minutes. I just did it a couple weeks ago. That's my great. parents did that when I was 13, and when I went to college, we put all of my um, living expenses on that card, and then I had to manage the budget then, with, because you could have like, I was added to the American mm. Express and you could have a separate oh. um, like statement for each card. And so then mm -hmm. I would have to yeah. audit each card, that one card every month and account for the living expenses and report back. So it kind of taught me a little bit of financial management and PL. I was older, obviously, it was like, you know, 15 to 20 is when they added me on there. Is it 15 and then all the way through 22, I think. Um, but it helped me then also audit my financials every month, which was really cool. Um, the, really the second cool. one, um, is a fun one, which is, um, you know, if you're building wealth, part of it too, is having control of your own destiny. And for our kids, some of the ways we can do that is establishing, um, the ability for them to literally own their own identity online. And so that includes, um, buying their website, like buying their name in a .com. So like we own quinnenglehard.com. Um, and then, um, you know, we don't know what the landscape is going to look like, but you can kind of think about like other domains or other accounts that they might need to have, like an email address, um, you know, also if it's Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever you think might be something that's relevant long-term, depending on the age of your kids, that's something that you can do. And then with Quinn's email address, we actually set that up where I email her account to keep it current, like to keep it like or it doesn't get timed out, but I'll email her um, Gmail account we set up for her and I email her memories. And so when she turns 18, we'll give her her password and it's going to have all these like memories in there from her as a kid. So and, kind of a fun way to... Spam. And so much She'll spam. I do go in and clean it out. I do go clean it out every now and then. I actually clean hers out probably more than I do my own if hey, we're going to be on it. Happy 18th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> here's and nine here's million emails <laughs> <laughs> from, from nine million years ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this company's the no longer that in keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> but it was relevant. I promise. At one point. <laughs> Excuse me. So, so the third tip on uh, ways to help build your kids' wealth is to set up their college savings account. So. Um, I know for me, I believe that one of the best gifts that my parents gave me was uh, no college debt, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I, my parents sacrificed so much uh, to put all three of us uh, through college. And it's such a gift. Um, mm -hmm. And so anytime that you can do that and start saving right now, um, I know um, 
people that have the, have the means also, if, if you have siblings that don't have the means, even with for your nieces and nephews, like if you have the ability to start helping um, save for college, it is definitely worth doing right now. Um, you do want to be careful not to overfund an account. Um, and you can actually roll funds between kids. So it's um, if one goes to an expensive university and another maybe decides to skip college altogether, um, you can use the that. funds from just one account. <clears throat> Um, that's what so we you did. Don't need, that's what you so did. So cool. We did. Yeah, yeah. It just it just seemed like it makes more sense because there's more flexibility there, and then, um, and then it's just like one less account to manage. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And like, hopefully, yeah, the really older did. one doesn't drain it completely. You know, and the older one's kind of stuck, and the younger one's yeah. kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah. We we as as sort of a backup we. Um, not a backup, but we also have bought a, like a house for each kid in terms of uh, for their college um, education as well. But we are doing the tax-free savings accounts for um, tax savings as well. Um, and just as a disclaimer, none of us are financial planners. So please seek your financial planner for all financial advice. Oh, thank you. Well, and the other thing you can do now, they made it legal to uh, spend your 529 on uh, private education. So it's yes. a great way to yes, yes, pay yes. for private schools tax-free. Yes, I forgot about that. Thank you, Wendy. When when I was reviewing this episode, um, you know, hours, days before we, we, we recorded <laughs> it, <laughs> like five minutes before we recorded it, um, I saved this um, uh, to, to share during this section. And, and again, per Sarah's disclaimer, you know, none of us are residency experts or sort of, you know, in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition experts. But my oldest son went to UT Austin and Texas does have great residency laws because a lot of yes. a lot of states, you can't get residency while you're a full-time student for obvious reasons. Otherwise, everybody would go with out-of-state tuition first year and then flip, right? But Texas has something where if you own a property, um, you can get in-state tuition or in-state residency, I should say, in 12 months. So we bought a home in Austin, Texas, and he filled it up with, um, there's four of them in this little three-bedroom home, and um, it, it, it does not cash flow. It costs us about $400 a month. And, and the irony is the dorms with the meal plan and everything were about 1200 a month. Yeah. So so it's if to us it was a savings, right? Um, it's, it's, we well, are going to make building it equity in yeah, that equity. We're make yeah. a profit on college. We're going to make yeah. money from sending Michael to college. So his first year he, he did pay, um, you know, out of state tuition. Um, and then, um, then it's, it's switched to in state. The, the interesting thing is, is that it, we've already, I think we've already paid ourselves. We've already made, we've already made a profit. We've, because of the Austin market, we've already made more than we will pay in to fund his college, which is amazing. Well, so I think that you should look into this if your kids yeah, are going out of state. Yeah, but I mean, don't think that that that's totally abnormal. What you're yeah, what you're experiencing, Mia. Yeah, so I mean, Austin, I, think that, I do. We I just think got that it is amazing. Right yeah, it, it's been an unprecedented. Yeah year for real estate appreciation. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't expect that guys, mm -hmm. but, um, just do the math. You know, that's what Bia is saying is like, mm -hmm. think about different options out there. And well, and, and to your point, and then we'll move on to the fourth one, but to your point, Wendy, you're absolutely right. Um, from a, just from a sheer cash flow perspective, we didn't know the market was going to take off like that when we bought it. We didn't speculate mm -hmm, right. that. What we did speculate, however, was that four or five years in when he was done, that it probably would at least cash flow and zero mm -hmm. base as a rental just because yeah. of, you know, normal inflation. And, um, and so uh, it will, you know, and so even if we never sell it, the, the fact is we own a cash flowing... It probably future cash flowing asset in Austin, Texas. So, yeah, that's awesome. It's the place to be. It is yeah. the place to be. I'm glad we own property there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in relation to that, so our number four is you can gift your kids up to $15,000 a year that they don't, they don't have to pay taxes on. So you'll be still using your after tax dollars for this, but they won't pay income tax on it. And anything you put towards their 529 counts towards that 15 per year, 15K per year limit. And if you're married, you can actually give each kid $15,000 a year for a total of 30K per year. Anything more Ooh. than that will, will count against your lifetime gift exemption, which I'm not sure what that is. But um, 
And if you don't want to contribute more towards their 529, you could just give them the money directly. Uh, they don't even have to know about it if they're young and it's tax free for them. And it spreads out your giving to avoid using part of your lifetime exemption. So you can just, you should just be probably giving your kids tax free mm -hmm. as much money as you, as you can afford. I need to get better at doing that like in December <laughs> when yeah. I'm, you know, like tallying up and, and maxing that. That's really good. Speaking of which, number five, we can pay our kids wages of up to $12,000 per year. Um, this is the best because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a deductible for you. It's, it's tax free for them. Um, they actually have to do the work though. And, and this is, you know, pretty documented work. Um, we can get super fancy and they can have, we can create a one person, um, you know, LLC that, that you're paying into. There's a whole bunch of fancy stuff if you want to go down the rabbit hole in this, which we won't today. But um, but you can go farther with this as well. But they have to do real work. And in the, they really, and I think that's part of the lesson of this, by the way. Yeah, you can't um, pay them $1,000 an yeah. hour or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be, yeah, it has to be like least. auditable. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But well, if you figure that's so $1,000 a month, Wendy, on average, you know, it's like sure. 250 a week. Like, yeah. what could they do for 250 a week? That's mm -hmm. you know legit. Mm -hmm. So I have mm -hmm. a, a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, and we've been we are doing this. Um, and they help us with mailings. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there, there's there are legit work tasks mm -hmm. that they can do, yeah. and we have mm -hmm. a mail house in in the office, and so we're just paying them um, the same hourly rate. Um, but they help with mailings. They help with um, other administrative sort of. Um, tasks. And mm -hmm. so uh, those are just some ideas uh, that you can yeah. have kids at a variety of ages handle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah the Quinn was our greeter at we our welcome. Yeah, like at our mm -hmm. client events. Sorry, V, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I'm sorry. I love that. Quinn is the best welcomer ever. She's she's got it down. And what were you saying about Aiden? Now. He does he does yeah, database he does a lot entry. of data input for us, Wendy. So mm -hmm. um, I find that when awesome. we have to transfer things from databases, he's always our go-to. He is just you know, it's like fifteen dollar an hour, twenty dollar an hour stuff, and um and it, we really need it. We legit need it, and he yeah. can do it on his own time. And um, social media as they get into high school, a lot of them are probably better suited to do your social mm -hmm. media than you. So, yeah, yeah, that's um, awesome. You know, I have three kids. So does Sarah. Um, that's thirty six thousand a year adjusted, yeah. or you know, off of effectively our adjusted gross income. Which I'm not doing this really that well. We're doing it a little bit, but I, I don't think I'm maxing this stuff out well. So I'm grateful for this episode. <laughs> My kids are old; they don't want to work for me. Yeah. <laughs> Quinn, Quinn has like, already started on. negotiating her hourly wage. She's like, nah, oh, I, I don't that. think that that's enough for that job. Like, <laughs> all right, Missy. Get to wow. work. I think you should let her win. Later. Well, you know what you can do, Seychelle? And I'm going to talk about this a little bit later when we talk about compound interest. It's one of our bonus tips. But um, I had my kids do some work. Um, mm -hmm. we, we were doing some, I think we were doing some, actually some Her Best Life mailings kind of, kind of stuff. And um, of course, they asked how much they would get paid. <clears throat> And in my mind, I was thinking I was gonna probably pay him about $250. And so I decided to plug that into a compound interest calculator and project it out to their retirement age. Which I'm if you put 250, if you put $250 in an, an account, in an interest bearing account that's getting 10% interest, in 50 years, that's worth about 24. $24,000, I think it was, no, it was $29,347.71. So when they asked me what they were getting paid, I was like, guys, you're in luck. Mama's feeling rich today. Uh, the good news is you're getting paid $29,347.71. And they were like, you should have seen the look on their faces. They were like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's like a car for each of them. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, and the and that's the good news. They're like, wait, what's the bad news? I'm like, well, the bad news is you don't get it for 50 years. <laughs> so it was like, wah, wah, wah. But then it was also well, this, a good lesson in compound interest. So I am this, absolutely this is like that. a what 
Wendy's giving tips on how to negotiate with Quinn right now. Like, what okay, I'm like, I'm literally, literally like, like <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. literally, like, I'm stealing up. that. I'm absolutely yeah. stealing that because she is a amazing, she's an amazing negotiator, like out the gate. So speaking mm-hmm. of retirement age, so our number six tip is actually you can contribute to a Roth IRA for your kids. And, you know, you may have heard the last one we were talking about with paying them wages and thought, gosh, it's too much work for me to track and, you know, not that much upside on how I'm doing it, which is fair. But where it gets really interesting is with a Roth, with a Roth IRA. Um, you know, the downside with that, as Wendy mentioned, is you can't um, access those funds until you're 59 and a half. Um, but this is huge because it's it's creating a um, financial discipline with them already because you're putting in future funds for them that they can access later. And there are some exemptions um, that allow you to have qualifying events to take money out from that or take a loan from it, which is like birth or adoption of a child, medical expenses, a home purchase. And there's a few others in there too. But you know, in order to do this, your kids actually have to earn income to contribute to their Roth. So that's the next step we're going to talk about then is you know, how we get into actually helping them with that income part. So those six tips were amazing, you guys. And today, <laughs> and today only, you get two bonus, bonus, bonus. tips. Bonus. <laughs> so, uh, bonus. Bonus tip number, number one, one, a.k.a. Yes. number seven tip. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, as Wendy said, teach them about compound interest. This is such an important thing um, to for them to understand. And honestly, the earlier they understand it, the better, um, because they will be uh, fiercely sort of protective over any income that they get or gifts, money for their birthday, things like that, because they can turn that money into thousands and thousands of dollars through understanding compound interest. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of great videos on it um, and making sure, and also calculators as Wendy mentioned. Um, so I very regularly uh, pull up the calculator online. Um, I also do this a lot with my team members, uh, especially if there's ever like a question on you know, oh man, that, you know, that, that one was really hard. And it, it, uh, my dollar per hour was like low on that sale or something like that. And then if you put that same dollar amount into a compound interest calculator and you can show people, well, make sure you save it wisely. Cause you can turn that hard work into a lot more money. And so, um, you can look, go to online to compound interest calculators and it will tell you what the amount will be. So that's so cool. I love that. I love that. Well, and then the last bonus tip, uh, aka tip number eight, is to I think you do yourself, you do your kids a big favor by allowing them to manage their money early on. So mm-hmm. I've done lots of things wrong with my kids, but one of the things that I've done right is they do understand the value of a dollar. And I think one of the main reasons this is is because starting at age three, I actually gave them an allowance that was. Uh, commensurate it with their age. So when they were three, they got a $3 a week allowance. And when they were four, they got a $4 a week allowance. And what this did was, <clears throat> first of all, it stopped every single fight in Target about them wanting to buy something. Because whenever mm. they would ask me to buy something at Target, I would turn to them and I would say, well, did you bring your money? Yeah. And of course they didn't. They were three. They would forget it every single time. And it's not like I'm going to rom- remind them when they walk out the door. So pretty much we'd get to Target and I would say, well, did you bring your money? And they would be, they would say no. And I said, well, next time bring your money and then you could get what you want. And that was great. So it just like stopped that uh, conversation. The other thing about giving them a tiny allowance is, is that $3 really doesn't buy you anything at Target, even 15 years ago when my kids were getting their $3 allowance. And so what we did um, instead was is we would uh, drive down to a little used toy store uh, in Austin and called Anna's Toy Depot. Mm. And um, what that showed them was, was that you actually could buy something for $3 at the used toy store. And Gus, my oldest, would buy these little Matchbox cars that at Target were probably a four or five dollars, and at Anna's they were all ninety nine cents. And so, of course, when they got their three dollars, they wanted to spend it on something. And so, either we'd go to the used toy store, or if they wanted something special at Target, they knew if it was twelve dollars, they'd have to save up four weeks. 
Yeah. And so I love that. that really taught them the importance of saving. And I can remember uh, I was out with a, with a good friend of mine. <clears throat> Our kids were the same age. And her son wanted to um, get some Legos. And they were like, it was like $30. He didn't have any money. And she's like, well, I'll loan you the money. And I just like, in my mind, I mean, I didn't say anything, oh. but in my, my, in my mm-hmm. mind, I'm like, no. Because basically she became the credit card for this kid. Right. So whenever he wanted something, um, he got it. He, he, there was no self-discipline. There was no delayed gratification. And uh, he was able to kind of get everything he wanted and then pay his mom back, you know, kind of uh, whenever yeah. he wanted to. That is, that's such a good life lesson. And that's actually something, um, Wendy, you talked about with me a long time ago when Quinn was little bitty and is something that we've done. And the other cool part about that is when a kid says they want something and they have to spend their own money on it, it really makes them decide like, do I really want to part with this money or not? Like, and so Quinn for a long time would be like, I really want this. And I'm like, well, if you, I didn't bring money to spend on that today. So if you want to buy it, you can do it with your own money. But if you don't, then that's totally cool too. Um, and then on the things that she wanted, but she didn't want to spend her money on, we'd take a picture and create a photo album. And that became like her birthday gift list or her Christmas gift list. So then we had that to send to people um, for birthday gift ideas, which was helpful too. I love that, say. That's so smart. Yeah. Oh, well, Wendy, this was, uh, Wendy did it. Uh, so, Yes. Yes, I, I love it. So this was awesome. Eight ways uh, to help our kids uh, build wealth, help your kids build wealth. And I took pages of notes. I was sending George messages uh, with my notes as, <laughs> as we went along because this episode was was really good. And really, I think the, the big thing is sort of how we started, right? The opposite of spoiled is grateful. And so uh, when you follow these eight things, what ends up happening is that you have kids that do have gratitude um, because they they do understand how each dollar matters. They also, um, most of them will come out understanding the sacrifices that you've made um, to, to get them to where they are. So add them as an authorized user on your oldest credit card, uh, buy their name.com, set up their college savings account, get them $15,000 per, per year that they don't pay taxes on, pay them wages of 12000 per year, contribute to a Roth RA, uh, Roth RA, IRA, teach them about <laughs> compound compound interest and give your kids an allowance and help them learn how to manage money. So uh, thank you guys for listening today. Uh, our hope is that you continue having uh, big businesses, but even bigger lives. And when we can look at our kids and see uh, the joy of having kids that are grateful, man, that is a big life. So mm-hmm. get out there and big business and big life. Thanks guys. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Bye.